Um, it's pretty early right now, actually, and um, definitely don't recommend to do this, but I did have a cup of coffee at roughly like 5, 5.30, so um, I'm kind of jacked right now, even after the work day that I had. Uh, maybe it's just a Jesus thing, who knows, right? Uh, <laughs> but... Um, I wanted to share this message with you from my reading here this evening um, that I was getting put on. And this one, unfortunately, isn't like, it's not the grandest, I guess, if you will, message of like, oh, Jesus is love. Well, at least the like base context of it. I mean, because Jesus is love. It's just sometimes that love is convictional, if you will. So... Um, we are in John chapter 13 right now, and um, to be real, this chapter, J Jesus is really going in on Judas. I mean, just really going in on him. Uh, granted, he deserves it because he was betraying, you know, the Messiah, our Lord and Savior. But at the same point, like, Jesus was not letting him, like, go on it it's not like he was condemning him either like he was just bringing the baseline of conviction into judas's like whole perspective here so um chapter 13 verse 10 um after uh peter was like wash my feet and uh, Jesus was like, you don't realize what I'm doing. And Peter was like, okay, never mind. Don't wash my feet. And he was like, no, like, Jesus was like, no, if you want to be with me, you, like, need me to wash your feet. And then Peter, of course, we, we love Peter because he's just, like, so open and honest with Jesus all the time. He's just like, okay, then, like, here, he's just open and, I guess, more more or less sincere about things with Jesus. And he's just like, here, like, just just wash my hands, my feet, and my head on this. And he was like, no, like those that have already bathed don't need clean. They don't need bathed, but they do need their feet washed, right? And to, verse 10 actually goes on to that, but then it does something else, which is wild. Uh, Jesus answered, those who have a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. Verse 11, for he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. So, just going in on Judas for betraying him. And uh, verse 18 uh, goes from Jesus predicting his betrayal. And he says, I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen, but this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. I am telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. Very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified. Very truly, I tell of you, one of you is going to betray me. Just really going in, you know. And um, we'll go uh, verse 26. Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Jesus took the bread, Satan entered into him. That's just, it's crazy to see that one of Jesus' disciples, like, like Satan entered him. And Jesus was still so loving about it. Um, so Jesus told him, what you're about to do, do quickly. But, and we're on verse 28 now. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had, charged of the, uh, had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. So Jesus also predicts Peter's denial um, here on uh, the uh, next I guess, paragraph, if you want to call it that. <sighs> so, um, we'll go um, to 
verse 36. It's John count number one, by the way. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And that's the end of chapter 13. But the two things that really resonated and really picked up for me heavily was uh, verse 1 that states and iterates, uh, not verse 1, I guess, the first uh, point which iterates that uh, Jesus predicted Judas's betrayal and was really poking him about it. Like that's that convictional sense coming in. Was still loving about it. Was still, you know, like you just do what you're gonna do. You know, like betray me if you will, and you know, like just do what you're gonna do. And it was really Satan that entered him and did all of these things. It wasn't even Judas necessarily. It was the devil playing with Judas. And, um, I mean, it's really sad to see what Satan can do. But the other thing as well is, um, that he also predicted Peter denying him. So we saw that, I mean, Peter had this like basis of like saying, Oh Lord, I will completely, you know, like go full sin for you. And Jesus was pretty much like, nah, dude, like you're, you're going to betray me. Like, after the rooster crows or after the yeah after the rooster calls or crows three times you're gonna betray me and uh we which if god wills it um i will probably bring that up as well um in another video if i haven't already as well but um it, just if the holy spirit like puts on me that like that's something that comes across you know like i don't ever want to say like oh i've been anointed or like i have the holy spirit on me but like i definitely feel like you know these points wouldn't be as heavy on my heart if they weren't being transcended or like sent like or like you know like something that i feel like the holy spirit wants me to like get out there but um really like as we have seen in previous chapters or if you've read the bible before or if you've even heard about the passion or seen you know like the passion of the christ or the passion of christ or any of the actual like bases of what his passion death and resurrection were then you would understand like yes judas betrays jesus and um it's because of satan and that peter uh definitely does deny Jesus uh, whenever people were asking him if he was with the Galilean, as they put it. And um, it's like something that kind of I pick up from it is really like you, you can sit here and you can worship Jesus and like praise Jesus and really just give him your full sin and life with Jesus, but betray him whenever people ask. Or not betray him, I guess deny him in your life when people ask. And like, that's kind of like the two sides of the coin thing, you know, like you, uh, I guess serving two masters in a sense. But um, something that this message is really supposed to send down is like, I feel like conviction, you know, like if you feel like you are following Jesus and just all of a sudden on a whim, like you're just like betraying him, um, then you should really, you know, repent. You should repent, um, truthfully repent. And uh, repentance is a major, major uh, part of following Christ because you're going to fall. I mean, you take it from me here. I'm just as susceptible to falling and I do fall quite a bit. Like the life choices that I had made previously to being reborn again um, as a Christian were, uh, I mean, they were, I was such a hardcore monster to myself and to other people around me. And I just know that repentance is key to getting anywhere successful in life. Um, and not even successful in life, I guess. That was kind of the wrong way to put it. But really, like, successful in Christ. And, like, loving in Christ. Because 
I mean, as long as you're accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're praying and you're, you know, like doing your part as a Christian, then, I mean, really it's just loving God or loving Jesus. If you're doing your part in loving Jesus, then there's that. But you shouldn't be loving Jesus as an obligation either, you know, like loving Jesus will be the thing that ultimately sets you free from any bondage or slavery that you've found yourself in. And really, I mean, that's like the biggest pedestal of faith that you can give our Heavenly Father, too. Um, but yeah, I mean, really, like, I, even after denying Jesus, Peter was still forgiven on that rise again. Just to give the glory and the entire, I mean, the entire pedestal that we put Jesus on right there. Like, he deserves it. I mean, he died on the cross for our sins. One of his most, I mean, I'm not going to say most or least active disciples, but he was a very, very, very involved disciple. Um, betrayed him or denied him. And he was still forgiven. The one that betrayed him hung himself. We're not going to get into that. You probably shouldn't betray Jesus. Just because, um, I mean, yeah, it's got Satan written all over it. But, I mean, denying him, that's also kind of like sinful because you're lying about things. But you can be forgiven. Especially if you are, you know truthful about your repentance my only thing on it is is if that you're truthful about repentance and you're at a point now where you're considering like giving into sin old sin not necessarily like if, if it's not worldly you know things that you enjoy um but if you're thinking about giving into sin and it's specifically sin like this should be a sign that there's conviction behind it telling you not to do it like denying jesus if you will you know if you're denying jesus if you're thinking about denying jesus in one way or the form or the other then you should definitely rethink it or reconsider it because there's a journey behind that too that isn't the right one but you can have faith that if you slip up in the moment with something that jesus told you you were going to do you will be forgiven long as you repent and turn to him. And I feel like that's the entirety of what the message is tonight. Is that we oftentimes will have so much in the world coming at us. And so much expectation from everything and everyone in the world around us. That we often lose sight of what we have been blessed with in this life and i feel like that's the main thing that we should understand and reflect on and thank the lord for is that you know like he because of him and everything that he has done for us we have the lives that we do like i have been blessed with um hearing that I have orientation for my second job on Tuesday while also still having a concurrent job at the moment. And I'm going to be real with you. That's absolutely amazing. Like, I could not believe if you were to tell me five days ago that I was going to have two jobs. That's amazing to me, really. So... Um, I'm going to be working 60, 70 hour work weeks. Now, my thing on that is that I'm already working 45 hour work weeks and I'm a sore boy. But um, folks, if you want to pray for me on anything, pray that the Lord's with me on this and that he just gives me the strength to be able to persevere on this and not let the devil intervene because the devil's been trying me hard this week at this hard working and this hard labor job but i feel like this is god making me stronger physically at least also like mentally because of the endurance behind it and because of the extensivity of the work i mean it's it's hard work but god's got 
you know, God will make a way. Jesus will be there the entire time. And I pray consistently at this job because, man, man, is it a backache, dude? Like, man, I've lifted things heavier than I've ever lifted in my entire life right now. And I need, bro, I need to get back in shape as well. But, um, yes, if you, if you feel like you are, you know, you are denying Jesus or betraying Jesus in one way or the other with things that you're doing or things that you're thinking about doing. Just remember that this message, you know, alone, let alone like Jesus Christ himself should be putting that conviction on you saying like, like, go ahead and do it if you want to, but this has happened before and I will, you know... I've, I've given you the information that you need to hear in order to understand that that's not a good idea. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for all of the things that you have done for us here, Lord, for bringing us all together and for allowing us the time and space and all of the amazingness that you have brought upon for us to be here in this world, in this life, worshiping you and praising you, God. Uh, Lord, I pray that with this message, Lord, that you always put the conviction in the right places for us, Lord, to, to help us understand how to continue on this path that you have set for us of righteousness, of love, of grace, Lord, of your wondrous, wondrous mercy, Father, of your salvation, Lord, of just bringing all of this together for all of us one step at a time, Father. Lord, I just pray that you, you, you bring forth all of our wrongdoings to our face in that peaceful, convictional way that you do it all the time, Father. And I just pray that you, you continue to help us shape more and more into the people that you want us to become, Lord. For you, God, are the King of kings and the King of the Jews. And you are just the King, Lord, and I just thank you, Father. We thank you for all that you've already done for us in this life, Lord. And we want to serve the best always. And you are exactly that. And we thank you for letting us serve you, Jesus. In your heavenly mighty name, Lord. In your heavenly mighty name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I really, really just want to clarify that God Jesus knows what you're doing because he is God in the flesh. Jesus knows what you feel about him but because he's God in the flesh. But one thing is for certain that if you truly repent and you truly go to him that your debts will be forgiven, that your wrongdoings will be forgiven, that all of your sins that you've committed in anger will be forgiven. And just in general, he will forgive you. You just truly repent from your heart. Do it from your heart, and he will forgive you. God bless you, folks. If God wills it, I'll see you again tomorrow. And I hope you all have a great start to your weekend here. It's still hot. I don't know where you are, but um, I pray that if you are having a hot weekend to drink lots of water, maybe enjoy a barbecue or a grill or somewhere, if you're into that sort of a thing. Um, and just praise God the whole way through it. And God bless you, folks.